This week on Open Falls Training, creating bootable media using Etcher.io. Welcome to Open Falls Training. I'm your host, Matthew Williams, and this is Open Falls Training. Today we'll be covering how to create bootable me media using Etcher.io. One of the things that you'll want to do in your transition to Linux is to be able to test different distributions from a live media. Now you could just burn a DVD image to a disc, but that's really that's waste materials, takes time up, and really isn't that practical in a lot of respects. Linux has the ability to be turned a DVD image for a Linux distro to be turned into a bootable media that you can run from your thumb drive and work to use a a program called Etcher from Etcher.io to be able to do this. And to help me with this, I've got my friend Adam from Epos Vox, who's going to show us how to get Etcher running on Windows. And then when we come back, we'll show you how on Linux to run the same program and then how to use that program to create your media because this is a cross platform app. It means it runs on Windows, Linux, and OS X and functions nearly identical across all these platforms. So with no ado, let's send it on over to my friend, Adam. All right, thank you for that, Matthew. My name's Adam, we're at Postbox, and I'm gonna be showing you how to get Etcher set up on your Windows machine. So of course, head on over to etcher.io, and then you can either click download for Windows, or you can get specifically the x64 or x86 version for your machine, if you know you have a 32-bit or 64-bit computer. You can tweet it out, share it with your friends, all that jazz. That's not necessary. However, just download the executable file and save it to wherever, your downloads folder. It should automatically detect if you're running a 64-bit machine, but if not, you can, or, or if you specifically want a 32-bit EXE, you can choose that. Once it's downloaded, click on the EXE from your downloads folder, tell it to run, accept the user access control prompt to run it with administrative privileges to run it on your machine. And then once the installer pops up, click install, and you can show the details to see what files it's copying where. By default, it is just installing to your C drive. Installs very, very quickly, especially if you have a solid state drive at all. And then once it's finished installing, make sure Start Etcher is checked if you want to go ahead and start it, and hit Finish. And then once the app is loaded, you can check out some of the settings, or just go ahead and get started mounting your images, as Matthew will show you here in just a moment. All right, Adam, well, definitely thank you for that. And so we'll switch on over here to our Linux system and show how to get it on Linux and how to get it running. The process to get it on Linux is pretty much the same way as on Windows. You head on over to www.etcher.io, click download for Linux, and it's will start the download automatically, but I have already downloaded this previously, so things will be a little quicker. So, it gives us a string here that we can run, but you actually don't have to do that the way this ships. So what we want to do now is open a terminal window and change CD into the directory where you downloaded this to. In my case, it was CD space downloads slash etcher. And I'm there now, as you can see. So to run etcher, we just type sudo dot slash et and hit tab to finish it. And then hit enter. It'll ask for your password. Type that in, hit enter. Then you'll get this little pop-up asking if you want to install it, um, install a desktop file. I'm not going to do that at this time, but you can choose yes if you want. But for now, I'm going to click no. Give it a moment here to pop up. I'm not sure why, but it's a little slow to open sometimes on my system. But here we are, here's the program. And they make, they give a very beautiful, very simple to follow interface. 
In fact, on their website, they show all the steps as it goes, but we can select an image. So I'm going to use an Ubuntu 1404.4 because that's what I'm using for the open, some of the other OpenFOSS training material that I cover. You click open, the next thing, and see here, it's already automatically selected for me, my thumb drive. But if you wanted to be sure about that, you can come over to another terminal window, type D message, and look for the, your thumb drive. It's going to be one of the last things that shows up. And as I can see here, it does in fact show that my thumb drive is SDH. So it automatically selected that for me. And now I'm right here and I can click flash. So click flash. We'll let this run and I'll be right back after it's finished. And as you can see, when it finishes burning the image onto the thumb drive, it begins the validation process. Now this is really useful because it'll help guarantee that everything got transitioned over correctly during the process. So we'll let this finish up and then we'll come back with a few final thoughts. All right, and here we are with the process finished. And the nice thing is, it asks us if we want to use the same image to make an, another one, or if we want to use a different image. So it makes it really handy if you have to make a couple different things in a row to be able to do this. And one of the other nice features of Etcher is that not only can we use this for creating bootable media or bootable thumb drives, but we can also use the same program to write the image files for Raspberry Pi to SD card or micro SD card. So, you know, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this, you know, and thanks to my friend Adam over at Epos Fox. Be sure to check him out. Links are down here in the description. And of course, I cannot, you know, thank my supporters who've helped make these videos possible. My friends at Think Penguin, uh, Di Digital Ocean, Valentina Project, and all the producers who 